let's study this concept of what is called the region of integration for a double integral or iterated integral a little bit further. So let's suppose we have this region. We would see this in first and second semester calculus where we're using the integral as an area calculating tool. And I'm using the letter R here to represent region. And, you know, in Calc 1 and 2, we might look at, you know, dividing this into N uh, regular rectangular divisions and a limit process would ensue. But ultimately, we would end up with this double integral, um, the Calc 1 version, sorry, single integral. And the limits or boundaries would be in terms of x, x goes from a to b. And then I have a little memory device I always tell my students. Um, I always use the term upper minus lower. Um, but what is a better way of looking at it is bigger minus smaller. And I'll come back to y in just a second here. And the upper function, or the larger y values, is g of x. And the lower function, smaller y values, is f of x. And we do that subtraction because that's how you find out the difference um, in a positive way between two values. If you have, uh, for example, in the y-axis, you're going to go from uh, negative 2 to 10. You know, the distance between those is 10 minus a negative 2, which is 12. So bigger minus smaller or upper minus lower. Now, here's how we're going to look at it in the multivariable calculus with the double integrals. We're going to view this as the x values are going from A to B, so that will be you know, the bigger minus the smaller later on. And the lower y value is f of x, y is equal to f of x, and the upper y value is y equals g of x. And I claim that these are the boundaries for this same region of integration here, also called the limits of integration. And the cool thing is, is I can prove this. Remember, we treat this second integral, this inside integral, as a first calculation. And then later, we'll calculate with respect to x. And this goes from y equals f of x to g of x. And the integral of dy is just y. And y goes from f of x to g of x. And according to the fundamental theorem of calculus, that would be y equals g of x minus y equals f of x, which is a match to our calc 1. Once again, I'm having trouble scrolling the paper. My apologies. Let's hold it here for a moment. Now, let me show you one more example of this nature. All right. So here's a problem where I've given you the double integral. And we're going to look at the region of integration. Um, the inside integral is a y equals. And the outside integral is an x equals. And so those x boundaries, we think of from, um, uh, we write the smaller one at the bottom and the bigger one at the top. So I'm going to call it left to right because that's what x measures uh, in our typical xy plane. And so that's x equals 1 to x equals um, 4. 
And then y, well, the lower boundary should be the bottom, and the upper boundary should be the top. y equals 0 to y equals x squared. All right, remember to always go small to big. So if I were to sketch this, y and x. Um, the graph of y equals x squared is this parabola. And we want to measure this from x equals 1 to x equals 4. And the y value goes from y equals 0, which is the x-axis, to y equals x squared. So this, my students, is our region of integration. Now, we can do a little check, make it similar to um, calculus one, from one to four, from zero to x squared, dy dx, and that would be equal to, from 1 to 4, the integral of dy is y. y goes from 0 to x squared. And that means we're going to have y equals x squared minus y equals 0, which leaves us just this. That's our old area calculation from Calc 1. Now, i going to follow up. What are we doing here? The last few minutes here, it's made it look like I've been calculating the area of this region. But I told you previously that we could think of this double integral as volume. So it turns out that this integral from 1 to 4 from 0 to x squared dy dx could literally be the area of this region and I'm enhancing it to make it look more noticeable but if we think of this as being a 1 here Remember, we just don't write the one. Sometimes I have students that call it the silent one. Then that is actually my z value. And so let me give you a different kind of visual here and see if I can use my little cheat sheet to figure this out. Uh Think of this as a little three-dimensional slab, but the height of the slab is one unit, and then suddenly, where this one is area calculation, this one is a volume calculation. Um, the difference is here we would have units squared, and in this one we'd have units cubed, and we would hope that the question would provide us some guidance of which type of question we're looking for. All right, till next time.